to where at Sima with Dan on this fantastic track. And uh, we've seen this all over the place, but I really wanted to catch up with you and go deep into the system, how right. you've built this and where this is going and where you guys are going. So we'll tell us everything about the track. Okay, so this is a 1950 3100 Chevrolet pickup. Uh, it's actually our prototype in our mule truck. This is the one that we did all our testing on. Um, we're a low-volume manufacturer of replica vehicles, electric vehicles. Yeah. So that's a game changer in the industry. Correct. So we've actually got our manufacturing license with this specific chassis. So we're manufacturer EPA certified and CARB certified in the United States. We're one of the first replica manufacturers that actually has these certifications. Uh, we use this truck as our mule. It's got about 5,000 miles on it. We do burnouts everywhere. We drive back and forth to work. We do everything that we're supposed to do with it. Um, it actually has the Amper EV battery pack set up. Mm -hmm. And set up in this configuration is actually what's certified. It okay. has an IM225 motor. It does have a torque, trans, uh, torque box, drive shaft, and a 9-inch rear end in the back. So right. as it's set up in this truck right now is what the certification is. Okay. Yeah. So what does it mean for the industry? Does it bring a new clientele altogether? So it does. So basically this changes everything. We've talked to with uh, NHTSA for the manufacturing licenses. Um, the, basically, the only way that you're going to get a license in the United States is if it's electric. Okay. Uh, they're not passing out any license for any gas burners. Uh, I even asked them about uh, if they're going to do any kind of hybrid, um, and they're not really allowing it. Uh, they're really getting stricter on their laws for all of it. So Why would you do an hybrid, though? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, right. What we found, like I said, we've always, from the beginning, uh, we wanted to be a manufacturer. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. our thing. Uh, our thing is using mostly all new parts. So like I said, this is our test mule. This is an original 1950 body that we put on an all new chassis, all new suspension and everything else. For our manufactured version, it's actually an all new vehicle. So it's all brand new parts. We were able to get bodies from Dynacorn that are all brand new. Uh, so it'll actually be VIN numbered as a 2026 or 2025. Uh, brand new vehicle okay. that looks like a 1950 Chevrolet. So take us through the process of ordering a new truck from you guys and how long it's going to take and yeah. maybe budget-wise what it takes. Okay. So usually what we're doing are high-end resto mod trucks basically. So these are super fast, uh, super durable, they're drive shaft, like I say, they're, uh, they're VIN number, VIN coded, and they're all new parts. So you're looking, we're looking at a turn time of around six months from start wow. to finish from the time you place your order till the time we deliver the vehicle. You get to pick your color you get to pick your wheels, you get to pick your style, your okay. interior style. We do everything manufactured in-house. So we do the interiors, the exteriors. Let's walk around pretty, it, yeah, yeah. We, build the, we build the frames, we build the chassis. Uh, basically everything is built in-house. Uh, we actually assemble the calves from parts. So we don't actually get a cab completed. We have to assemble all that. Okay. We do all the paint, body work, and interior work <coughs> to try to modernize it and make it look more like a, wow. a newer vehicle. <laughs> So as much as you will offer a really high uh, amount of custom um, orders for the interior, for instance, or mm -hmm. the colors and everything, will you be building like turnkey cars like in stock? So we're going to do a turnkey. Um, basically, our turnkeys are going to be a, a basic version of this. So this is actually a 140 mile range on it. Okay. So this would be considered our basic chassis. Uh, we do have one that we're working on now that has a 300 mile range. Wow. So we'll have this as our basic chassis, and then we'll have the 300 mile range as the next upgrade. And then price wise, you know, they go up from there. That's your starting level price. Usually they're running around 185 to 230, and they go up from there depending on what, you know, what kind of paint you want, what kind of tires, wheels, stuff like that. Do you really think people need or will order 300 miles uh, options? I mean, this has rapid charging. Why would you need so much? And Correct. Not going to tow much with a truck like this. Right, right exactly. So um, basically, the 300 mile range vehicle are for people that want to do long range cruising with their hot rods, right? Okay. So yeah, if they yeah. want to go on a, a hot rod tour, they'd yeah. be able to take it for that. Right. Like you said, we have fast charging. Um, and what I tell everybody is it's it's basically like it was 30, 40, 50 years ago where when you were driving a gas car, you had to kind of plan your gas stops. Yeah. With these, you plan your electric vehicle stops. You plan for fast charging, so you have to hang out for about 30 minutes, but you can go you know, pretty much all over the country. Yeah. Yeah. This is the original patina off this truck. Like I said, it came up from Farmer, Georgia, which is our, we're Southfield Classics, and we're actually, we're off Southfield Drive, where we're at in Flowery Branch, Georgia. So this is an old farm truck. 
This truck was actually brown and we wet sanded all the paint off of it. And this is the patina that it came up with. Like I said, the only thing that's original on this truck is the body itself. Okay. Everything else is brand new. All the running gear, all the chassis, all the motors. So Take us through um, the battery pack um, where you started installing it, if you have different designs for different yeah. options. Or so what we found uh, on the battery pack setup is when we scaled it out and we weighed it, it actually weighs the same as a 350 Chevrolet motor, okay. a, ga a wow. gas motor. Uh, with that being the case, our battery packs actually fit back under the hood <clears throat> in the same spot. We didn't have to modify any of the chassis yeah. for it to fit. Basically, all we had to do was adjust for uh, weight ratio over the front wheels. Okay. And it's once we figured that out, we figured out everything could fit under here. A lot of the components on this truck we've actually uh, exposed so that we could show off you know, our suppliers uh, for giving us that. On the manufactured trucks, the new trucks that we're putting out, basically you don't see any of that. Okay, all right. Well. So it also means you can use off-the-shelf suspension components. Off-the-shelf the suspension components. So we've got a Heights front suspension on this one, Mustang II style. Yep. Uh, this one has electric power steering in it. So we've added all the electric features to it. Uh, electric power steering, uh, air conditioning. Uh, we can add power windows, power brakes. Or, uh, power, this one has power assist braking on it. We've got Willwood brakes. So basically all the hot rod stuff is still involved in the build of the vehicle. It has a four nine inch rear end. Uh, with 411 posi track rear end so it'll smoke the tires off so it does all the cool things so um so how many vehicles do you think you'll be producing in 25 and 26 so 25 or 26 goals we're looking at between 10 and 12 vehicles wow. we're also doing a replica 1965 ford gt you mean a tribute a tribute <laughs> correct uh we're doing a tribute vehicle in all, all electric for it as well nice so between those two vehicles that's our two models in the line uh, we're looking between 15 to 16 vehicles a year. All right, so next year here at SEMA, we should see another vehicle from you, probably a Mustang. Yes. Yep. All right. Yep. So, as you say, it only takes, to me, it on, only takes six months. I feel it's a really yep. short uh, mm -hmm. turnaround. Yeah. Uh, do, do the customer visit you? Can you? Do, so they can, uh, the first thing they'd yeah. reach out to me online and then we'd have them come out to the shop, check out the facility. Uh, they can come out, we can discuss, you know, features that they like, what they don't like. Uh, they get to pick their, their paint colors, their wheel packages. They get to pick their interior colors and design and style. We have a certain number that we, um, that we uh, give to the customers. We say, hey, you can pick from these. Yeah. It's like an a la carte menu. Uh, they can go through and they can pick. And then if they want something really special, then of course that would be additional cost. So, so who do you think is, is your typical customer? So a lot, uh, customers for us are, are guys that are hot rod guys um, that have that have gotten maybe a little bit older and uh, can't work <laughs> on their stuff as much as they used to. Or they're also people that are looking for basically clean transportation. And reliable. And reliability, mm -hmm. correct. Yeah. So you want to be able to get in it, drive it to any show. Uh, these you charge, you go to a show, you drive back, you hang out all day, you don't have any problems with it starting, cranking, anything like that. Um, but I mean, we're open to, to a lot of different uh, different buyers. Uh, we, we've had a lot of interest from pretty much a, a wide range. You know, we've got people that like the electric vehicles, but they want the hot rod look. Mm -hmm. um, we've got, you know, just a whole range. They like the speed, like the horsepower, so they like the rest of mod feel. Uh, so we give it a little bit on the interior. We give it a little bit of an update. So this is uh, this is our standard package where we actually put the screen in the center behind the steering wheel. Still very discreet. Yeah, discreet. Um, on our uh, manufacturers, the screen is actually in the center and it has actual gauges that look like an original truck. Nice. So we've mixed it up a little bit to give uh, a wide variety of, uh, of changeability for the customer. Uh, basically, they can pick and choose, they can make it their own. And with a lot of hot rod guys, that's what they want. Yeah. They want it to be their truck, right? Now, a hot rod is never a cheap option. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What type of budget are we talking for the base? Uh, so for the base, yeah. For, the, yeah, for the base truck that we're manufacturing right now, you're probably looking at about the mid 250s. Uh, which, you know, with a high-end rest of mod, that's about where you're at on a gas exactly. motor. Is a, yeah. So it's around the same range as that. Um, like I said, you get the reliability of an of electric system. The good thing about these trucks are when you drive them, you're, it's like driving a roller coaster. I mean, you're in a 1950 <laughs> truck, and you're, before you know it, you're doing 90 miles an hour, and there's no noise except for the wind. Yeah. So it's really disoriented. A lot of guys are like, man, it's like, it's like riding in a roller coaster, and, and you just don't even feel how fast you're going until you get there. So. Um, so the, these drive-through and deliver 
quite a bit of talk. Mm -hmm. um, did you have to chill it down for this application? So this one we have four, uh, 411 Posi track uh, rear end, so and uh, we've distributed the weight pretty evenly across the vehicle. It's 3,600 pounds, which is what a stock truck mm -hmm. this year actually weighed. Um, the 411 Posi track, like I said, it'll smoke the tires off if you get on it. So on our manufactured version, we did come down to about 373 gearing. We changed the gear ratio just a little bit, just to give you a little bit more positive off the line. Uh, we've also put wider tires on some of them as well so that we can get more traction. The only issue that we have right now is traction on a heavy hit. So if you're really standing on the throttle, <laughs> yeah, it, it gets kind of gets kind of quick and squirrely. So. All right, then could you tell us a bit more about the drive tune you've been using and um, yeah. why you chose uh, Ampere EV? Absolutely. So uh, when we first started the company and we decided we want to be a manufacturer, we were looking for a system that we could actually put in right away. Everything worked like it was supposed to work and get us on the road fast so that we could start testing. Uh, part of our process was to make sure that we tested our system, make sure we could get it into a vehicle, get it working, get it rolling as, as quickly as possible. Um, actually, two years ago at, at SEMA, we uh, met up with these guys at Amper EV. They had a, a DeLorean that they had, tr that had converted over and were driving it around. Uh, come to find out, they're 45 minutes from our shop in Georgia, <laughs> uh, so, which we didn't even know. Uh, so we hooked up conversation. They said they had a, a kit that we could use immediately. Uh, so we purchased a kit and that's what we've been using ever since. So I've been in the business for 36 years as a car guy. I was a painter to start with. Uh, we currently have about 15, 17 employees at the shop right now. Uh, mix of welders, fabricators, painters, designers. Uh, we do have a couple engineers that work on staff as well. Uh, I came to this business, like I said, I was, I've been in the automotive business for 36 years. Uh, I actually answered an ad to be a shop manager uh, <laughs> and the, my boss had actually interviewed me. He, uh, he neglected to tell me there was an electric vehicle till actually the end of the interview. <laughs> at the end of the interview, he said, oh, by the way, we're doing electric vehicles. Uh, so I went home that night and I thought about it and I was like, look, this is something new, um, something that, uh, that's basically innovative, something that I've never done before. Uh, for me and being a builder and a fabricator, it's like, all right, I got to prove that we can do it. Uh, and we jumped on it with both feet and uh, that so was two years ago. So you completely your career. Yeah, basically. <laughs> it basically changed my career. So I, I tell everybody, I did the certification process on this truck. That's the first time I've done that. I've always been a hands-on yeah. guy, a mechanic, uh, you know, beat with a hammer. I did upholstery. <laughs> I was a painter for a long time. Um, I spent about 11 months going through the process with the government processes, with the, uh, the NHTSA, the replica car law, the EPA certification, the CARB certification. So I've had to, I tell everybody I'm more like a hammer. So uh, <laughs> you take a hammer to the government, that's basically what you get. So we've got everything passed through. It took me about 11 months to do it. So, but at the end, we've got, we're able to manufacture a brand new electric wow. replica vehicle. So. That's mind blowing because yep. not so long ago, maybe a year ago, you would not have thought this would have been possible whatsoever. So uh, absolutely. I started, yeah, when I started with the company, I was like, yeah, that's that's not going to happen, you know, that's not going to be one of those things, but it's persistence, you know, persistence pays off. So, so this is a three-pack setup from uh, Adam Drive System and Amper EV. It's three battery packs, 42 kilowatt hours. Uh, it provides 140 mile range in this package that we've got, EPA certified. Um, it's attached to the ID or the IM 225 motor from Cascadia Motion mm -hmm. that runs the drive shaft. It's basically at 300 horsepower, 350 foot pounds of torque. Uh, does really well. The Ampere EV system has been a uh, been a godsend for us. And actually, uh, their capacity, their uh, service after the build has been impeccable. They've actually helped us and walked us through a lot of things. Uh, easy, compact system to use. Came out great. And like I said, they're our OE supplier for our, our manufactured vehicles. Martin, take us through the system, what it takes to build a car at, uh, at a show in four days, Sorry. and also where uh, Ampere EV is going. Sounds good. Yep, yeah, I'm with Ampere EV. This is our Adam Drive system. We're here at SEMA. We're partnering with Legacy. Uh, they're doing a live build. So we have a couple of uh, technicians that have gone through the Legacy training, but have never touched our system before. And over three days, they're installing our system into this chassis, and it's actually going to drive out on Friday. So that's what we offer is we do all the engineering so builders can do the building, Legacy does the training. You know, you gotta have your, your basic knowledge of an EV system, you gotta be safe around high voltage. Uh, and so they're able to do that, we're able to engineer the system. Okay. So it's pretty cool, they're putting in our 42 kilowatt Atom Drive system. So we have three battery modules on this, we have a Maverick 25 motor in the back. We do the holistic system. So we do everything from the VCU and BMS, brand new battery mo uh, cells in the modules, all the cooling plates, all the thermal management, you get the hoses, you get the Durali coolers that come with it, all the PDUs. So you get a complete powertrain system 
so you can do an installation. Okay, Martin, why did you opt for this chassis uh, as a test mule? So uh, this is a great chassis as a test mule. It's a it's an 818 uh, from Factory Five. They don't make them anymore, but we had a couple sitting around, and it's nice because it's nice and open and two frame, and we can swap out and bolt things right in and, and do some quick changes. We also run this around the track okay. uh, as part of our validation testing. So we do some hardcore testing at our track in Georgia, which you should come out and see. Absolutely. Uh, come to our facility and then go, we'll go around the track in this guy. Uh, and so in this one, you know, we've got a different motor in here. It's a Maverick 25, which is a newer motor to the market. Mm -hmm. um, it's a bit like a Tesla small drive, but instead of, you know, taking a, a Tesla small drive unit out of a wrecked vehicle, it bit, gets bench tested, but there's no warranty. Yep. This has a one year warranty. It's a brand new unit and actually puts out a little bit more power than a, uh, than a Tesla small drive. Um, so this one's coming in at around 300 horsepower peak and 305 pound feet of torque. So it's a fun little one. And then this, uh, it'll rocket you. So, uh, you know, we're just, we're just under 2,000 pounds in this this chassis with that much power. So when you go around the track, you have a fun time in it. <laughs> uh, Martin, for international audience, could you tell us if this will become an option around the globe? Yeah, so right now we're, uh, we're in North America. What we're working on for 2025 are over-the-air updates. So that way we can send the system anywhere in the world. It can get over-the-air updates for VCU and BMS. We already have uh, telemetry on the vehicle, so we can look at the data logs of your vehicle, yeah. which is great, but we also want to be able to push those updates to you. And we see that as the next portion to be able to ship one overseas. Okay. Um, we want to make sure that you're able to get those updates and have the latest and greatest software whenever you're driving this vehicle, wherever you're driving this vehicle. All right. And for a first-time user and installer, could you sum up the total investment between the training and the system, what we, it will uh, uh, probably cost? Yeah, certainly. So with Legacy, their training is right around $5,000. You come out, you do a week boot camp um, of low voltage, high voltage, learn all those great things. And they also have a specific training for our system. Okay. So some of the unique things that come with our system, and especially through Legacy EV, is we're taking care of all the pinouts and connectors on the low voltage harness for you. So we'll send that to you, you measure it out, you send it back to us. We do all of those, we put it on our test bench. We make sure everything's right, it goes back to you and you can plug and play. Wow. We do the same thing with the HV cables. So amphenols are notoriously hard to, uh, to some, some put day, on yeah. there, right? Like one little uh, issue and, and they're not good. So we do all of the amphenols for you to your custom lengths and then uh, we test them and then we send them out to you so you can hook them up. So, so what's the turnaround? Are we talking a couple of weeks? Uh, yeah, at that point you're, you're at about uh, two weeks. So you know, ship it back, we get them, we do it, uh, and, and ship it back so to you. So fairly quick, yeah. Yeah, yeah, fairly quick. We try to, to be quick for you. We know these projects. At that point, the, you know where all of your, your items are laid uh, out, yeah. right? And so you're doing your build, you're continuing on, they come to us, and then you can come back and keep yeah. going. Yeah. And you can build you know, the vehicle that you want to build. So a lot of, you know, we have some customers that are doing low volume manufacturing. And so it's, it's a rinse and repeat. We already have all of their measurements on file. Okay. Oh, so it you're comes ready with to go it, already. Yeah. Ready to go. Yeah. But if you're doing a one-off cool build, you're going to have some different measurements, but you have other things to do on that while we're taking care of those connections. Um, with, you know, as far as the price goes, this is the 42 kilowatts. This is our entry level battery storage. Um, you can up that to 84 kilowatt. This one starts right at 45,000, add a motor. You can add options like AC, fast charge, level three, uh, power steering. We do sub ambient cooling if you're doing something on the track like this, yes. or you live in a hot place like Arizona or Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Um, so that's a new feature that's coming, or that's, that's out this year. Um, we've got, you know, next year we've got the NACS, we've got the over the nice. air. We're looking at 800 volt dual motor by Q3. Um, and so some of those things that you know, the market's looking for that we can provide off of this system that we've already architected. So interesting topic about going 800 volts. Do you think it's mainly for charging? Is it just for marketing purposes? And you think it will actually deliver way more power that will actually be required by say racing series of cars that will be built with your system, for instance? Yeah, certainly. So it's, it's about providing that power. And it's also about providing efficiencies. So when you get up to 800 volts, all of a sudden you can have the same amount of battery storage that you know, battery storage is the most expensive part of an electric vehicle. You have the same amount of battery storage, but all of a sudden you get more efficiency, so you get more range out of it. You can also deliver more amps to a motor. So if you have a very high performance motor, you're gonna get more peak power out of that motor. You know, one of the features that also comes with our, our system is all of the thermal management. So we have chill plates built into these. They're thermodynamically engineered to keep every cell the same temperature. We also warm them, which is uh, you know, not a normal feature in most kits or powertrains that are out there. So we make sure if it's going to a cold environment, that the batteries are warm enough that you can enjoy the vehicle. Uh, so that's standard on every single one of ours. But then we also have the heat option for the cabin. Uh, you know, it's the little things and the integrations in our system that really make it a nice package. Um, everything comes through a GUI touchscreen. 
and that way you have all the controls available. But you can also do your gauges, okay. um, you know, Inteltronics, Dakota Digital, Speed Hut, all those sorts of things. But this one's a, a pretty fun little build. It's our test mule. We have a lot of fun of it. Fun in it. And I'd love to have you come out to Georgia and take a ride. I around think that's going to be the next step, Martin. Thank you so much for the introduction. And as you said, we'll see you on the East Coast only in only a few months. And guys, if you like what we saw today, let us know in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up. And guys, we'll see you in the next one.